welcome you to the next session on embed software testing this is a lecture so 11 uh, this is the last session of this unit uh, 1 of uh, embed software testing here we will uh, go through the master test planning and uh, its details and in the end uh, we will uh, analyze uh, the unit 1 details what we have studied so far and in session 10 we have uh, understood that uh, different models multiple uh, we started with uh, life cycle uh, models prototype and formal life cycles then we studied V model having requirement design implementation on the left hand side and and on the right hand side we have unit testing integration and system testing and uh, we also went through the multiple V model life cycle model prototype final product uh, these were considered for multiple V model life cycle so we also went through the activities that are involved techniques uh, test levels types other issues the mapping to the multiple V model. Uh, we also studied a allocation of uh, test related issues on the development cycle and uh, on the prototype and on the final product how it is applicable for the multiple V model. Then we had uh, gone through a nested multiple V model which will be having a uh, uh, multiple V models nested based on the uh, components that we have. Usually, in the larger systems, uh, we have used. and also we went through top slides on uh, testing by developers. That means at the initial stage of the testing uh, by development team itself, they can do it since they have the necessary debugging and. Uh, uh, similar testing environment uh, what is intended for testing so that they can fix the errors or the bugs. Uh, this is uh, we also through why testing is important uh, at the developer uh, stage is uh, in terms of uh, finding the defects early to gain the confidence to go ahead with the next level etc. Then we had gone through slide on testing by independent team. Uh, we know that all the tests are done by independent team, the separate team driven by them, including the test plan and all the stuff activities. So there are uh, five stages of uh, formal life cycle for independent testing, planning and control phase, preparation phase, specification phase, execution phase, and completion phase. And we had a exercise on that. Okay. We study about uh, master test planning. Uh, what is uh, master test planning? Uh, typically, uh, testing of a larger system with many hardware components, hundreds of thousands of uh, code lines of code in the software uh, it behaves complex right that means it is a complex endeavor. So, involving many people specialists performing different testing tasks at various points in the project uh, very much required uh, and especially uh, complexity in terms of the states software states or the system states and the transitions of certain components exhaustively we need to test it which uh, is something like a higher integration level or non integration level that is uh, based on the complexity that the system is involved and uh, the features uh, user terminals or business requirements all these have to be considered as well in doing the testing. So, what we do is we will have a group of teams. So remember here testing is done by a larger team. 
so larger team means we can further subdivide that larger team into sub teams and some teams they can focus dedicatedly dedicatedly on performance requirements specialized features functionality low level requirement etc it can be segregated for the entire software testing for these complex situations master test planning is very much necessary so what it does is it formulates a mechanism to control the overall testing process so hence the master test planning has come to picture uh, it basically requires the complex systems requires good plan so that is why we need to have a master test plan so that is why the term called master test plan okay so larger system larger systems having complex functionalities and features have a high degree of attention to testing master test planning provides can you to control the overall testing process for such complex systems uh what it does is first the difference between the test types and the test levels is explained so what are the test types what are the test levels that we will see it in the next slides so basically it will bring the differences between these two because that is very much important in identifying the key elements of the entire plan so that is why master test test planning is conducted based on this it is a difference between which aspects are being tested and which organizational entity is executing the test the master test planning then deals with the combination of both so what it primarily does is which or what aspects are being tested that it will identify and it will differentiate with who is doing the test or executing the test it is what is organizational entity it is nothing but a set of team or a set of allocated specialist or a person who will be involved for the entire testing activity so they finally call these all these will be finally put together into the master plan that is why it is very much required to have master test plan in order to test the complex systems uh complex systems uh, for example i can quote something like uh, brake control systems engine control systems we have uh, flight control system fuel measurement fuel management uh, don't assume that uh, fuel measurement is just a conjecture the cost of the fuel and it will be measured against there are a lot of uh, uh, control systems control sub systems are involved along with uh, uh, the sensors and their feedback and there is something called uh, I'll write it here. Redundancy management. Redundancy management is something like uh, we have a quadruplex systems or duplex systems so where one or the other channel. It could be second one, second subsystem takes over. for controlling the intended uh, operations or it could be one or the other systems which will uh, uh, be used in order to arrive at a specific decision so that is where redundancy is uh, very much important so we have a two channel system four channel systems etc where uh, uh, almost uh, each channel will have a similar functionality each channel inputs are very much used to arrive at a decision which one is good which one is bad which can be discarded which can be used so typically in a flight control system so we have a few right wing elevons or 
uh, actuators. Uh, this kind of a redundancy is used very much. So definitely they live with the complexity of uh, the underneath the software, hardware, uh, what are the subsystems that is involved within that memory system. So to have a development life cycle or to draw a test execution we need to definitely have a master test plan. So, because it's a complex systems where we need to identify lot of activities, lot of types, uh, mechanisms or methods, etc. So that is why it's very important to have a master test plan. Okay. So, what are the elements of master test plan? These are just basic elements. What I am trying to highlight here. Uh, this can lead it to further, uh, or this can further uh, broken up into minute, de minute. Uh, details as we discussed in the earlier sessions about test planning, test cases, processes etc. Broader level test types are defined that is the first thing of the master test planning. A test type is a group of activities with the aim of evaluating a system on a set of related quality attributes. That means test type identifies a evaluation mechanism for certain things like it could be a performance, it could be meeting certain criteria, it could be a quality aspects in terms of coverage or standards etc. So basically it does a it basically accumulates the group of various activities aim is to evaluate the system based on certain attributes or measures. Test types state what is going to be tested and what is not. So something like a scoping it does. The test types will define what will be tested, what are the activities, how I am going to group it and what are the tests that will not be taken care of or that will not be done. So that is what the test types state about. It means a system can be tested from different parts of you. It can be tested functionality, performance, business requirements, user friendliness, etc. So these are some of the quality attributes that describe the various aspects of system behavior. Of course, there are standards exist. For example, ISO 926. I will just list out. So that will give the nine one two six or the one seven eight, etc. So some of these standards also can be used in terms of arriving at certain approaches for testing. So these are the quality attributes so that can be used for the test types. In practice, several quality attributes are often combined in a single test. That means a single test can have a single quality attributes. Likewise, and test types state what is going to be tested, what is not. For instance, a tester doing the functionality test is not. I mean, it will define basically uh, who will do what functionality and uh, performance uh, related or vice versa. The other way, like performance uh, and the functionality uh, in terms of uh, which tester is going to do which one. The below table uh, we can see some of the test types based on the applicability. So, as I mentioned, applicability here means uh, that. It is again depending on the complexity of the underneath the embedded system. So this table we have a test type, its description, and quality attributes that are included. What are the test types that are considered for master test planning? They are functionality, 
interfaces low rent stress support it could be manual production recovery regression security standards resources okay so let's see one by one what is the functionality test type testing the functionality behavior that means uh, functionality is being addressed here so all the features or the functionality of that embedded system will be uh, categorized under a functionality test type uh, basically that is driven with the inputs so input definitely will have error in the inputs to test the behavior of the particular functionality and interfaces as i said in our course basically it is a, a interaction between a couple of sub systems or an external system or a signal or a state whatever it is so that is what it does testing interaction with other systems other systems could be sub system or any external entity so this is coming under quality attribute called connectivity sometimes we can also mention as communication so maybe communication is more sensible compared to others okay so i mentioned as communication as one of the quality attributes that we can attribute to interface then we have load and stress allowing large quantities and numbers to be processed that is we have a system capable of taking a certain load a certain input certain quantity of input say 5000 rpm or 7000 rpm so range is something like 1000 to 7000 rpm let's say 7000 to 10000 rpm let's say for example uh those kind of requirements or those kind of test type is coming under load and stress so what we want to subject the embedded system is allowing the higher number with a fully loaded embedded system so that we will test the behavior of that particular condition with the large number of inputs or large quantities when it is fully processed with these inputs okay the next type is a support providing the expected support in this system integrated environment that means uh, the types the test types which will uh, help us in terms of uh, uh, directly or indirectly arriving at some of the results so it is a expected uh, support in the systems intended in our such as uh, matching with the user model procedure so that means overall uh, uh, understanding of the uh, some of the features or functionalities we have uh, at to arrive at some analysis conclusions etc all this will be part of this support test it is uh, attributed as suitability The next one is the production test production procedures that means we have a production environment all the production based testing will be done under this procedure so that will have a quality attribute in terms of operability operability and continuity that means a mid system should be able to operate with a minimal interruption or maximum automation and it should continue the same way as it is expected once it once it is through with the given set of test procedures then we have the recovery testing recovery and restart facilities that means the like reboot power up requirements generation those kind of testing could be coming under this type of recovery where we have a test recovery and restart facilities uh, will help in doing this type of uh, tests Uh, this is listed under uh, recovery quality uh, characteristics then we have a regression 
you all know what is the regression testing whether all the components function at the function is the correctly of the system has been changed so why the system will change because it could have been bug fixed or any upgrade would have happened or any testing failures to be able to reproduce etc so all this comes under regression regression can have any of this quality characteristics that's why they are put as all then we have a security testing security so all security requirements uh, sometimes we can add safety requirements also under this test type called security then we have standards relating the uh, uh, compliance to standards like this much percentage of coverage should be there complexity coverage etc will all come under the standards so against the standards these step steps are defined this also is categorized under security or the safety because uh, uh, for example if you take a uh, aerospace uh, projects what happens is uh, they call it as uh, airport safety it means how the product is uh, safe when it is subject to certain tests so all those features come under this uh, standards and also it should be user friendly in terms of its operate operability and uh, usefulness then we have uh, based on the resources some uh, some of the sub systems uh, that embedded system primarily can use uh, like a, a power regulator so memory uh, communication interface at transceivers etc all these uh, measuring equipments all uh, are called as uh, resources so this resources type of testing can be under uh, test type of course you can combine with uh, this also interface as well as the resources uh, you can broadly you can categorize this as communication this again as i said it is subjective uh, based on the complexity of the system so these are some of the elements uh, under test type Uh, element uh, some of the test types that are listed we can add more based on the need of the complexity that we have we need to draw this because this is a very important in terms of master test planning the next one is uh, test levels the second element of the master test planning is test levels A test level is a group of activities that is organized and managed as an entity. So, test type is a group of activities with the aim of evaluating the system on a set of related quality attributes. Here, we define the test types under the quality attributes. What is going to be tested in test levels? What we do is we list out a group of activities. and uh, how it is organized and managed as a uh, set of activity is going to be defined so the table below is some of the common test levels for a system subject to supplement okay so before that and uh, few words is that uh, test activities are performed by different testers and teams as i said this because we are dealing with a larger systems so we may use a different environments or various environments uh, pertaining to certain set of uh, features that is under test so all these organizational aspects are the reason for introducing this test level so that is why it is important to have a test level defined for mass test planning Uh, test levels basically state who is going to perform the test and when
So it tells uh, it states basically who is going to perform the testing and when it is going to be tested. The different test levels are related to the development life cycle of the system. Uh, it structures the testing process by applying a principle of incremental testing. You know that incremental testing is a uh, development uh, process. We develop a small small pieces first. We integrate uh, one by one, and then incrementally we build the system. Uh, when the various components are of satisfactory quality. Uh, they are integrated into larger components or subsystems. So, likewise, we will develop the bigger systems. These, in turn, uh, are then uh, tested to check if they can to higher level requirements. So, we will start with the small uh, subsystems and components, then we will uh, grow up with the higher uh, incremental testing. Finally, we check if they can to the higher level uh, requirements, what is intended for that particular end system. And we know that low level testing and high level testing. Uh, low level testing focuses on isolated components executed early in the life cycle uh, in the bottom most uh, part of the V model. High level tests are tests uh, on the integrated systems or subsystems executed uh, later in the life cycle on the retention of the V model. It could be simulated or target based, etc. Based basically on the real life environment. So we'll go through the table of our test levels. Uh, all of this uh, we have gone through in our earlier slides in a different uh, class sessions in this unit. Uh, we have detailed, but this is about master test planning. Which defines each of those type of tests or levels of tests categorized under the master test plan. Okay. Hardware unit test, hardware integration test, model in the loop, software unit test, post or target testing. Software integration test, hardware software integration test, system test, acceptance test, field test. Again, these are all subject to applicability of the particular embedded systems. As we need, we will draw different levels pertaining to the embedded systems under test. Hardware unit test, it is the test level is low. And it is a done in the laboratory, in the lab, testing the behavior of the hardware component in isolation. As I said, it's a component level, unit level. It is called. You can also mention it as a unit test. Hardware integration test. That means it's also a low level. This will be done in the laboratory. Testing the hardware connections and protocols. Basically, we have CAN, AFDX, Ethernet, whatever it is. All these are part of hardware integration, where we basically plug all the hardware systems underneath the basic embedded system and we we'll test it. Then we have the model in the loop. It is this categorized either as high and low depending on. Uh, what are the type of models that we use? So we know that in initial stage of the project, we develop the models to prove it whether it is going to work. So basic purpose is proof of concept, testing control loss, design optimization. Some of the complex algorithms may need to be proven first before we actually develop and deploy. Uh, of course, in terms of memory performance, we may have to optimize. So in order to architect efficiently, we may have to do design optimization. All this will be covered under model in the loop, also called as MIL.
Okay. The next type is software unit test, host or target based system. Of course, I told here is hardware unit test. Uh, basically, a different hardware components want to be tested, we can do it. Or if it is not required, then we can go ahead with the pure software component test actually, because this gives a confidence that those units are fine. Uh, because what will happen is while doing the software unit test on the particular unit we may come across bugs or issues, so we presume that sometimes there could be a hardware problem, there could be a software problem etc. To make it clear that we are good at hardware we start with a hardware unit test, this can be done by a hardware team or a specialist who know about or who is knowledgeable enough on the hardware components, it is again a low level test laboratory plus host target processor is used of course laboratory has a both of this uh, typically it is used in the lab testing the behavior of the software component in isolation. Then we have the SIT software integration test. This is also low level, it is done with the help of the target port connected to the host. We know that how the target is interfaced with IDE, then debugging environment, breakpoint, and all that will use it to do the integration. Basically, here we try to integrate the different software pieces within the system and integrate it. We will pass the parameters, test against those parameters whether the intended behavior of the flow, flow could be control flow or data flow, uh, that will be the aim of the test. So, testing interaction between software components, I can remember, software integration test. Similarly, the next level of test is HSIP, where we focus on the system, the entire system. Behaving when it is integrated with software components, and those software components how they have behaved on the target. The other one we focus only on the software to software the interactions. Here we focus on the software to hardware or hardware to software testing interaction between hardware and software is taken care of. HSIT. Here also we use the same lab equipment measurement. Uh, equipments and the target board, target board with the simulation or whatever it is, to prove that the software is working fine on the end, uh, end system, end target system. Then we have the system test as an integrated unit, the embedded system unit, whether it works fine as expected is done with the help of this level called system test. It is a high level, of course, the HSIT is also high level. Simulated real life, that means, uh, except few uh, items, we will almost have the entire system. Say, suppose exception is what simulated real life, that means it is not the actual system running on the field. Suppose if it is a fuel measurement. Or if it is a speed, so we will not uh, take the embedded system target onto the road with a high speed of 100 miles, 200 miles, etc. We will not do that. Instead, what we do is how it the speed or the fuel actual fuel is going to fit into this. We are going to simulate that those inputs and those inputs with those help of those inputs, how it is behaving is what. We are going to test it. So this is under a system test, and aim is to test whether it is behaving as specified in the high-level requirements. Basically, it deals with the HLR or SRS or SRD. It is also called software requirement specifications, software requirement document or high-level requirement. A subset of high-level specification is. Uh, business requirements or uh, user requirements. This is uh, tested under acceptance test. That means 
whether the product can be accepted. This is also done with the help of the simulated real life with the actual end target. So testing that the system fulfills its purpose for the user it means basically we look from the customer or user perspective in all aspects of acceptance. And uh, last one, last category is again subjective. We can use the field test. Uh, some of the complexity, some of the features need to be tested with the help of the environment. Something like uh, ambience or uh, weather. Uh, of course, weather also taken care. Like we have a temperature change or uh, they will be doing. But as an integrated system, sometimes we may have to test on the field. Those things are categorized under field test. Testing that the system keeps working at the real time conditions. Extreme conditions could be their attitudes, whatever it is. All this will be taken care with the help of field test. So this is the test level under the master test planning. So we have two types test types which deals with what is going to be tested and what is not going to be tested. So we'll summarize all the group of activities. Uh, basically to evaluate with the help of the quality attributes then we have the levels all these attributes have been defined how they are going to be tested that means what level you are going to test it let us say uh, modeling loop or software or software integration or hardware software integration system test etc or a component test all this will be considered for master test planning. So, in continuation of the master test plan, here is a picture. We all know that uh, we have understood already about this. Uh, it's another way of depicting a master test plan. Uh, don't get confused with what we have studied in our earlier session. It is same where we have drawn uh, the picture of uh, our different levels of our test. Uh, we have. Uh, Uh, acceptance test, system test, hardware software integration test, unit test, etc. It is all part of the master test plan. So, a master test plan uh, can be viewed as the combination of what has to be tested, it means test types, and who is going to perform those test activities or the test levels. So, that is about uh, the master test plan. Of course, we need to coordinate uh, the various test levels. Uh, it should prevent redundancies and omissions. It ensures that a coherent uh, overall test strategy will be implemented. Decisions uh, must be made as to which test level is more suited to testing. Uh, testing which system requires quality attributes, so that decisions have to be taken care. Of course, uh, the specialized resources such as a specialized test equipment. Measuring equipment and expertise to use that, all those have to be allocated to the various test levels of uh, certain functionalities or features. Of course, uh, there is a timeline uh, or the agreed period that also need to be uh, drawn inside the master test plan. So, an overall test plan has to be drawn up. Which defines the tasks, responsibilities, boundaries for each test level. It's very important to understand that. Boundaries in terms of expertise or limitation etc at each level of the testing methodology which spans across this master test plan. So that is why this overall test plan is called master test plan uh, basically this is done by the project manager and the project manager
or it could be a test manual depending on how it is organized in the master test plan so he will delegate the above ones all tasks who is going to do what all these responsibilities are done by the test management team or test managers or project managers so overall he is responsible for this so that is about uh, master test planning uh, test level and test types so three main areas uh, of interest for master test plan uh, that needs to be considered by the project manager or test manager before he draws the master test plan test strategic uh, choices what to test and how it is how thorough how thorough it should be that is one of the important test strategy choice that has to be done allocation of uh, resources expertise uh, it resources could be from the material for the equipments on said and resources could be from the human resources in terms of expertise or uh, the experience that is uh, required to be taken care and uh, how all these uh, different entities for doing the test the resources or the equipments how they are going to be communicated there could be involvement of a vendor also sometimes we may need to rent uh, uh, some of the uh, power supplies or the measuring equipments uh, how we are going to communicate within these disciplines that also is uh, an interest uh, for the master test plan and of course uh, the master test plan will know exactly what is expected from each of them and what level of support and resources they can expect the master test plan uh, serves as the basis for the detailed test plan for each test level uh, we can have a detailed test plan for each of the level uh, we can have a test plan for uh, acceptance test plan. we can have a test plan for a system test integration test in test etc all this combined together the master test plan uh, is formed uh, it does not need to prescribe uh, for each test level which activities must be performed in detail but it can point to what can be done that will be there in a detailed test plan so whatever the details are recited so so the master test plan deals with decisions that concern areas uh, where <coughs> the various test levels can either help or hinder each other so all these pointers will be part of the part of the master test plan of course uh, there are uh, other aspects of the master test plan also I just list out uh, just for the sake of listing it out is not mandatory but uh, for understanding sake uh, we will do it that is a uh, strategy we know that uh, we need to have a test strategy and a team for the same uh, infrastructure and organized organization i would say who is going to do what so this is basically some of the key elements of the master test plan and uh, we know that in tm method all these above are drawn with the help of uh, litter principle so what is litter principle life cycle infrastructure techniques and organization so this all will form the master test plan
So, master test planning activities. Uh, I will uh, highlight a few points uh, which are important. Formulate the assignment, global review and study. That means what is the strategy in terms of reviewing the outcome of the test and uh, how the team can start in terms of study. Determine the master test strategy. Uh, what is the basis on which the test strategy can be determined? Specify the infrastructure, define the organization, determine the global schedule. It means based on all these five above, uh, the schedule is drawn in terms of using this and coming out with, coming out with an execution plan for the same. So these are some of the activities. So this is done by a test manager, uh, and he starts as an early activity in the development process itself as a overall test process. This is done by developing a master test plan, uh, having a formulation of overall objectives, responsibilities for testing and designing the scope. Then a global analysis of the system to be tested and the development process is carried out. Uh, the next step is to use the information what is being discussed and carried out about how we can measure for taking the next step in terms of it could be a quality or performance etc. Basically we should have the aim of successful release of the system having done with the complete testing. So this is the determination of the master test strategy and involves choosing what to do, what not to do and how to realize. The test manager's main responsibility is to deliver this master test strategy, it accomplish this whatever we have discussed so far is getting accomplished with the help of master test plan. The Required resources, infrastructure, or personnel should be defined. To manage this, the communication between all involved and the required reporting must be defined. How it's going, how the individuals are going to report, and what frequency and to whom. All this will be part of the organization and and the test plan. A good master test plan is not created in a quiet and isolated office, it is a highly uh, what is that called political task, I mean it has a lot of buzz, a lot of people involvement and all that, uh, basically it requires a discussion along with the bargaining and persuasion throughout the organization, so that is a good master plan drawn by the project manager or the technical or test manager. So that is about the master test plan. The last part of the uh, okay, so of the this session I'm coming with a couple of slides uh, just to bring some of the pointers, uh, which will highlight overall what we have studied in this unit uh, in terms of principles. This is. Uh, uh, good set uh, done by Glenford uh, J. Myers. So, I just want to uh, point to this. So, 10 principles of emirates of practice. A necessary part of a test case is a definition of the expected output or result. We know this. We need to have an expected output and result. A programmer should avoid attempting to test his or her own program. That means the independency should be maintained. That means the programmer should always try to test as an independent way or he should not be biased while testing. A programming organization should not test its own programs. That means one is at the programmer level, another one is the organization. Thoroughly inspect the results of each test. That means once we have the results outcome, uh, even though it is passed, we should have a justification or we should have a validation. Why it is passed? We should inspect it. We should watch it. We should make sure that the right results are achieved. 
test cases must be written for input conditions that are invalid and unexpected as well as for those that are valid and expected. So both have to be taken care of. Examining a program to see if it does not what it is supposed to do is only half the battle. The other half is seeing whether the program does what it is not supposed to do. So that's both of them are very important. First we will do what it is supposed to do. The example telephone instrument, what it is supposed to do, and the same telephone instrument is what it is not supposed to do when something is not required or something is not specified in the specification. Seventh principle avoid throw away test cases unless the program is truly a throw away program. So unwanted things we should analyze properly before we make it a unavailable or unwanted. Do not plan a testing effort under the tacit assumption that no errors will be found. So we should not waste having testing effort just for the heck of putting some effort we should have appropriate effort for achieving the success of the test. It could be 100 percent at one go or it could have some errors but effort should be there always and effort should be on the right direction. The probability of for the existence of more errors in a section of a program is proportional to the number of errors already found in that section this is a very interesting principle uh, is always proven I have seen this and I am for this actually basically why because I have a source code of say 1000 lines and I found uh, say some 20 bucks initially and uh, at the end of the test of this 1000 line I found say 100 bucks definitely those 80 bucks could be based on the 20 bucks which I found it in the initial step. So there is a proportionality that already found errors could result in more errors of the new new errors or more errors that could be unearthed. I think it is an extremely creative and actually challenging task that means uh, testing is equally important and equally uh, well rewarded uh, task considered in the industry. So that is about uh, the 10 principles of Android software testing. We have alpha beta uh, this is basically need not be part of the embedded software testing but some production environment uh, is being used especially on the application side but uh, I have heard that uh, alpha and beta testing are also used in some of the embedded systems production environment. So just to understand uh, what it is uh, typically used in production the focus is focus of the testing is to simulate the real users by using a black box and white box techniques alpha test done by the customer at sorry alpha test at developer site by customer this customer will have an idea of the product at the development site so developer looking over the shoulder recording errors usage problems etc all this from development perspective is taken as alpha test controlled environment it means still it is not a full fledged or release environment with certain conditions that is carried out. So the next type of test after the alpha test is done beta test at one or more customer sites by end user it means the end user the real user of that will be testing the product at the customer site and there is no developer involved for beta testing it is something like a live situation where the product is on the 
market or the field. Uh, developer will not have any control, only he will be reported of the uh, issues that is uh, coming out of this data test. Customer records problem, so we are removing all the post of the So that is about alpha and beta testing. Uh, there are a few differences between that alpha testing performed by testers who are usually internal employees of the organization. Beta testing is performed by clients or by users who are not employees, it is on the field. Alpha testing performed at developer side, beta testing is performed at client location or end user. Instance can have the product and the tester before he uses actually. For his name. Reliability and security testing are not performed usually. Uh, this may not be applicable for embedded testing, but in general, uh, this is how they are using it. Reliability, security, robustness are put during beta testing. Alpha testing involves both the white box and black box techniques. Beta testing typically uses black box at a system level. Alpha testing requires a lab environment or test environment. Beta testing does not require any uh, in house environment or uh, testing environment. Software is made available to the public or the end user and uh, is set to be real time environment. Long execution cycle may be required for alpha testing, only few weeks of execution is required for beta testing. Critical issues or fixes can be addressed by developers immediately in alpha testing. Most of the issues or feedback is collected from beta testing will be implemented in future versions of the product. So alpha testing will be have a still chance of uh, reverting back with the updates of the product whereas beta testing it has to go through a different chain of implementation versions it has to bring you back to the factory and all that. Alpha testing is to ensure the quality of the product uh, before moving to beta testing. Beta testing also concentrates on quality but gathers user inputs on the product and ensure that the product is ready to uh, ready for the real time process. So, the way I have covered alpha and beta is some embedded systems can be covered under this. Uh, this is basically they use in industries like telecom where uh, they have uh, OSs like Android or Google, so they release uh, alpha test released uh, products and uh, given to the customer or so group of, of customers who will use it in the real time environment and that type of testing is called beta testing of the customers. Of course uh, end of session we have words. Uh, it is a repetition of all that, so maybe we can add some of this, some of the items from this class, something like uh, schedule in the strategies there. Strategy or competitive strategy, both are same. Any other words which you want to look at? Uh, master test plan of course it's part of this plan we all know that I think one word is a model in the loop so this is an important it's also called as MIL and then we will also see the master test plan uh, master test plan okay Um, 
model in law. We have a society and society. Hardware software integration, software software integration. Okay, the last part is the question. What are the main elements of master test plan? List the principles of embeds of focus team and their importance. And maybe we can have a question on. Data testing. This is of the differences. Okay, so with that, I will conclude this session. In the next session, we will take up the next unit of embedded software testing. Maybe I will recap of all the sessions that we had. For some duration to begin with, uh, the 10, uh, 11 sessions we have in the first unit, then we will take up the second unit on testing methods, dynamic testing, model based testing, core based testing, etc., as part of the next session. Okay, thank you.